Good morning, this is Chef Michael from Part-Time Permies, and we are continuing on with our holiday feast. I've just set up the sweet potatoes. I've got some brown sugar, some butter, and some broken up cinnamon sticks, and a little maple syrup, uh, pretty standard. So that'll go in an oven, uh, probably 30 minutes or so. Um, sun chokes here, I was just heating a pan. Um, I'm gonna roast those, I'll pre-roast them a little bit. And um, this oil was just getting hot, it's extra virgin olive oil. And oh, I don't want, the, don't want the water in there. Okay. So I'm gonna give these a quick start to the roast. Um, pan's just a little on the small side and then I will stick them in the oven. So I got three items to get in the oven. So I start with the sun chokes and finish with the uh, sweet potatoes. Uh, it's just, just gonna get a little salt and pepper. You could add any type of herb you want to this. It's, um, these will break down, get a little bit soft. Um, Started some bacon just before I heated up the uh, cast iron. Rendered some bacon halfway, cut some apples up. That's going to be for the roasted Brussels sprouts and turnips, which should sit in here. Um, still got our greens, our roasted garlic. Might put the roasted garlic with the uh, sun chokes. Potatoes will get on the heat um, pretty quick here. When I turn the goose down, it's putting us a little over an hour out, and so uh, I'll get that going. Cranberry sauce is sitting out, just letting it warm up a little bit, um, closer to room temperature. So I think everything is in motion right now. I have our potatoes, they've cooked for 35, 45 minutes, something like that. They're pork soft, but not falling apart. Um, I'm gonna dry them off. What's in the pan? Oh, those are the sun chokes. I roasted them, but um, not extremely hot because we got other things roasting. So uh, they've softened. I'm just going to sear them down a little bit, develop a little bit of color. Potatoes are dry. Um, just dried them out briefly. We'll get some hot cream and butter going for that a little bit. So we're going to just puree the <clears throat> potatoes in a food mill. You can use a food mill, you can use a ricer, you can do a straight out mash, that's fine. But a uh, palm puree is traditionally done through a mesh. reason is we don't want to collapse the starch, which we made nice and light and fluffy. So we uh, try and treat it gently with a mill. It's a pretty small one. The milk, you just want to warm it um, or scald it. Don't really need to bring it to a boil. Cream. Potatoes should stay hot. They're nice and fluffy and loose. They should be, stay hot. The milk should be hot. Otherwise, when we stir it all in, um, it can collapse the starch. Some salt in. Choice white or black pepper. I use either one, but white pepper in traditional European style. Touch nutmeg in there. Watch out for the white pepper and the nutmeg, they can get strong. Not everybody's used to them. Um, they're good, but really small portions. All right, now you can either use a, a whisk or a spoon or a, I happen to have a masher here. I'll, just gonna stir it together, don't have to do much. Should be just a little thinner than an American mashed potato if you're doing a European one. Uh, it will set up on you a little bit.
Going back to the bacon, which rendered out a little while ago. It's half three quarters cooked. I'm gonna use that fat to grease my pan. We're gonna start the Brussels sprouts and turnips. So we got the blanched Brussels sprouts from yesterday. They're all in good shape. Turnips, nobody's lost any color. We've got the apples. They haven't lost color, it's been an hour. Um, pulled the trick on you. I sprinkled them with a little bit of salt, uh, salt water, and I dipped them and then I just poured it off about 30 seconds later. That fixes the color pretty good, um, almost better than lemon juice, and it doesn't taste lemony. Sometimes lemon's good, sometimes it's not. So uh, these have been fixed and they're not really changing color. So we're just taking this uh, little bacon fat, Brussels sprouts, as much of an even layer as possible. I try and turn a lot of them facing down. I do want to get them to steer on the downside. Depends how specific I want to be. These are brown. Give them one shake and let them brown down a little more. Gotta get the brown edges, so that's what sweetens them up. I could get darker. I'm just gonna hold them for a second here. And set up the turnips, pretty similar. Ran out of a little bit of bacon fat that was in there. Same thing, even layer. Just gonna let them brown on one side, but. Some pepper. The apples just add some fruity nuts. Tart. See, we've got some nice some browning. Back. If you go darker or lighter, you could do different herbs in here. Um, put mushrooms in here. I like to put chestnuts in, but we already got chestnuts in the in the uh, stuffing. And you can deglaze the pan with nice red wine vinegar, but balsamic will stand it. This is a cherry. Oh, that's a local cherry vinegar. What this does is it brings some of the fond off the pan, adds some acidity, increases the fruitiness, just kind of wakes it up. Sort of like lemon juice, although lemon juice is a little brighter than vinegar. You see all those little bits off the pan are coming, coming up. That's it. Alright, so this item's done. Alright. I'm gonna get some roasted garlic. This is what we roasted last night. I'm just gonna cut the heads off. Gotta cut through the stem. These are little guys. Just near the top of the, the head. It's going to allow me to squeeze out the puree to leave behind most of the uh, most of the rest of the uh, head. Okay, so we reheat this pan. I just rinse it out real quick. Extra virgin olive oil. Got some good oil today. Some organic extra virgin. Uh, this is for the greens. So we're so we're moving towards uh, pretty smoking hot pan because we got a lot of greens. They're going to give off a lot of water. So we got those mixed greens, two types of kale, chard, uh, some leek bunches in there. We're just going to sweat them down. We're not going to cook them too much, uh, just enough so they break down. Smoking hot pan. Greens are just a little bit wet from being uh, clean last night. We could spin them, but we, uh, we left them in a colander. They're in good shape. Let's start with that. These are going to. 
it's going to wilt down pretty quick and we'll add more. Use greens if you're careful, you don't touch the bottom. You can use tongs, fixes, we like to use hands. You can feel what's going on and I don't know. I guess I'm, I wash my hands a lot. the rest of the grains. Just trying to heat the oven up. Uh, go still in there just to finish browning off the sweet potatoes and uh, toast turkey. So it won't get all of it out, but it'll sure get most of it out. It's the easiest way to do a roasted garlic. If this starts to run a little dry, we can sprinkle a touch of water on it. It's fine. Should give off quite a bit of liquid, but been running on high the whole time because it just takes a lot of heat. Uh, we're cooking on electric here, so it's hot, but it's not as hot as some stoves. Just touch pepper, or touch salt. Don't need much for greens. We're gonna do these real natural. No other spices, no vinegars, uh, no sugar. Just greens and some leeks. So I'm gonna flavor up and get tender and, and mild pretty quick. I'm just turning these over a little bit to make sure nothing gets burned or overcooked on the bottom. Turn that down to three quarters. I'm going to put just a touch of ginger on the sweet potatoes. Skin's pretty good on ginger by the way, depending on what you're doing with it. Uh, as it gets older, it gets a little tougher. You take it off. Take a little bit off, it's a garnish. Cut that as thin as possible. Gingered sweet potatoes. Greens need a touch of water. I turn the heat down on those, they're just finishing out. Stir this up a little bit without breaking it up too much. Some of the glaze on the top. So I got a hot oven running. I got a 500 degree oven, so we're just blasting the turkey. Sweet potatoes. See how we're tasting. Some chunks. A little warm up here. I might throw them in the oven for a second when I get room. So we could herb these up or do a lot of things, but we're just gonna leave them with the extra virgin olive oil. So that's the special edition, some roasted sunchokes. All right, so we, uh, let's see, we got some local apple cider that we were cooking, uh, having earlier. Just got some cinnamon in that, so that's been the same cider we're uh, working with and cooking with. We've got that for drinking. How do you like the cider? So good. Mm, this is good. Uh, today we recommend the Percheron, which is a virtue cider. Uh, some of the best cider in the United States. It's a hard cider product from Fenville, Michigan. Um, we really believe it is among some of the best cider being made in the country, and it happens to be within an hour of us. 
Uh, so we've got a, this is a 2012 bottle, so it's been sitting in the basement for a little while. There's new stuff out, and I think they just won some new awards. So uh, we're excited to have them in our area. Uh, get out a bottle every once in a while. Quick glaze on the sweet potatoes. Uh, we're going to go in here with the sweet potatoes. It's very hot. So again, this is brown sugar, cinnamon sticks, and... Uh, very hot. Brown sugar, maple, cinnamon sticks. Touch ginger on the end. We've got the Korean or Asian sweet potato. And we've got the traditional sweet potato or yam. Hi. Hi, Heidi. And what are we eating today? <coughs> Chicken. Chicken? <laughs> I think we're eating turkey. Uh, Christmas. Is it Christmas yet? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like it, except we don't have presents. How well, what the hell is it? Awesome!